Hey folks, so Langflow, which offers a UI for Langchain, have gone through a massive upgrade from API to integrations to user interface. Everything have gone through a complete upgrade and it is amazing. So in this video, we're going to look at how you can build a chat with PDF app with completely no code tools, not just that. For the code base audience, now you can export the Python code from Langflow and run it in your Python application. So let's look at these changes and how we can build a no code based chat with PDF app with Langflow. So first thing that we're going to do is to install or get the Langflow app started. And the way we're going to do is you can click the link in the video description, which takes to this GitHub repo. And over here, you will essentially click on this deploy on railway button. So railway is a similar deployment web app as we have seen previously, like render. And in this first thing is if you do not have an account, please do make an account with railway. And then it might ask you to link your GitHub profile. One could do that, follow steps and give the permissions needed. And once you have that configured, then you can deploy this Langflow app. Now, the deployment process is quite easy here. You have to deploy clicking the button, and then it will ask you to allow for it to make a repository in GitHub and to give it a name. So you can give any sort of name. I've tried a few different before, so I can call this test bubble, or even I could just call it bubble to make it easy. And then once I do that, I have an option to make it either private or public, I'll make it private. And then I'll hit deploy. And now this deployment process will take a few minutes, I've seen an average of about 15 minutes or so, it will create an environment, it will go through all of the steps involved. So once that is completed, you will see a green sign or a green background saying that the app is live. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'll go back to a deployment that I had working before. And it is again off Nangflow. And within that, I see a green sign and everything is working good. So this link will take you to the Langflow deployment on railway. And when you click that, you will see that you have pretty much a blank canvas, and then you can make changes. So first thing is for creating a new project, you can click on this button, and then you see a bunch of options here. So in general, there are many combinations of things that you can do with Langflow. If you were to look at chains, just look at that the number of chains available. Same thing with agents, a bunch of those available. Pretty much every single one of these options have a bunch of available integrations. Now, the reason for this is that Langflow is connected with the Python based Langchain. And Python based Langchain has a lot more integration in general so far compared to the JavaScript one. And Flowwise uses JavaScript, and hence you'll notice that Langflow in general will have a lot more options available. Now, we will try to follow similar examples what we have done previously of document upsert and then retrieval. But I would highly recommend for you to look in the community examples, different possibilities of combining these blogs. So if you were to just start with a simple chat, you could fork this example, and then see for yourself how this is configured. And this one just takes the conversation chain and connects that with a large language model. And then you can chat. The way Langflow apps work is once you have the blocks configured with the API keys. So one could add the API key here, select a model. So there are a bunch of options here. And then you can hit this lightning button. And when you do that, it's going to run through your flow. And in this case, it tells me 
I am missing OpenAI API key. So that's a good way to make sure that your flows are configured properly. So I'm going to go back. I'll just showcase some of the apps that I was working on. So I am going to be using Upsert for Bubble. And in this flow, let me kind of walk you through what's happening. And this is something we have seen previously with FlowWise examples as well. So first thing that we would like to do is we would like to take a PDF and go through the steps of upserting the document. And if you're following the channel, you might be familiar with this diagram where any document retrieval system go through these two paths. One is document ingestion, the other is search or querying or retrieval of the information. And in this first arm, just to make it easy and visualize better, we go through the ingestion of document, be it PDF. So in this case, we'll take PDF. We extract the text from it. And then the text that we get off the PDF, we split it into small chunks and convert it into numbers or embeddings and save it at Pinecone. And Pinecone is one of the providers. There are multiple providers in this space. The main thing is to save it in a vector database. So in the retrieval, it's very similar. We take the question, we convert the question into vectors, and then we look for a similar vector to the question asked. So there are many of these text chunks, those were also converted to vectors. We look for the one that's most similar. And based on that similar or a few of those similar vectors, we generate a response. So this process is what we're building in Langflow. We take the PDF document, we go through this process of splitting the text, and then those chunks are then embedded using an embedding model, and then we save that into a vector database. And once we have that, then if there is a question asked, that also goes through a similar pattern. So we use a retrieval QA chain. This is one of the chains available in Langchain. And when we ask question, that also goes through the embeddings and it is looked in the vector database. So if one were to just run this app through an API call from Bubble, this itself is enough. But just to test the application and how it works, I'm going to add a retrieval QA chain and I will chat with the document right here in the Langflow interface. And the way this works is I'm using a retrieval QA chain. This is one of the chains available in Langchain. And this chain takes memory that's optional, but what it requires is a combined documents chain. So that's another chain available in combined documents chain. So I dragged and dropped. And using that, it asked for an LLM. I used an OpenAI LLM. And one could use any of the available LLMs here. Or you could also use the chat OpenAI option. So just to give it a test, I thought of using this retrieval QA chain together with the upser document option. So I had uploaded a file here, which is quite easy. You just click here and it takes you to file uploader from your system. And then once you do that, you are pretty much set with that block. There are options to have chunk overlap and chunk size. This is something I believe that came default and I left it at that setting. I added the OpenAI API keys. Now in the Pinecone block, what I did is I went in this section where I said I want to show these values. So the index name, namespace, API key, environment, and the search keyword arguments. Now we're going to be using the first four in our case. We'll come back to search keyword arguments later. And once you save that, you just have to provide that info. So in this case, I'll say constitution. And with that, everything looks good. This API key, it is not hidden by default, but this is a password. So I'm going to be changing right after this video. But just to showcase, this is what I got from Pinecone. Now, we also went through how to configure this on Pinecone in some of the earlier videos. So feel free to follow along on that one. And now once this is completed, I'm going to run the this lightning sign. And if everything is fine, it's all green, no issues. We are good to get started with the chat. So as soon as I hit the lightning button, it will go through the app. 
and make sure all of the blocks are working fine. And it takes a few seconds, but then in the meantime, it will also go through the process of upserting and making all of this available. So if I were to go to my Pinecone account, I can see that under the index name that we provided to Langflow, the namespace is available to us. And that is now upserted with documents. So just to test again, if I were to run this flow another time, it will change the initial number that we saw of 500 or so. Now we see that the constitution has additional vectors added. So that means that the flow is working fine. And if we were to test the chat functionality, I'm going to ask, what is this document? And once I hit enter, it will query the vector database and it gets us a nice response. So this means the retrieval QA chain, which is this full chain is working fine. Now, as mentioned, we don't necessarily have to have these blocks for our bubble app, but it's totally up to you. And if we were not to use that, then the way the flow looks like is just these flow blocks. We take the PDF, use the splitter, and then use embeddings block and then upsert it to Pinecone. Now, the main thing after this step for our bubble based configuration is to call this flow from an external platform. So similar to Flowwise, there are options to call this flow from an external platform like Bubble. And there are multiple options here. There's also documentation on what are the different tweaks that we could do. And tweaks are essentially parameters for each of these blocks. So if you were to open the option of edit in each of these blocks, you'll see that there are a few parameters that you can change. And you can change it from this screen or you can also call it from an API and you can pass these parameters. So that's quite nice. You can see everything that you can change in this flow right in the tweaks option right here. Now, in addition to that, in case you're not too familiar with a particular block, you could also hit documentation and it takes you to the Langchain original documentation of that particular block. So it's helpful in case you'd like to understand what any of these blocks mean. There are some which are not available yet, but the Langflow team is quite fast in adding documentation as well as new features. In addition, of course, there's also option to duplicate a block or delete this block. Now, since our flow is working fine, we're going to take the URL for this particular flow, which is right here. So I'm going to take this and I will use an app that was shown in a previous video where we use Bubble to chat with PDF. And in this, we had two sections. One is chatting with PDF and the other is uploading document. And in uploading document section, we provide a PDF and give some name. And then that calls API of Langflow. And then it will go through this whole process and upsert a document. So we're going to see how that could be done. Something else we had talked about previously is using scenarios. So there are different scenarios that you might have for your chat application. First one is the chat widget. So basically it shows as a widget. So we have seen this in Langflow where you can run this flow by hitting this lightning button and then it gives us an option to chat and then we can chat about the documentation. Now, this is the first scenario. The second was what if we have multiple documents that we would like to um, upsert and it goes into one partition or one namespace in Pinecone. And it might be that there are multiple users and all of those users are just uploading and upserting to one area of this vector database. And that's the scenario we're going to look at in this video. Then we also talked about how scenario three is different where you have a multi-user application and each user has different documents, but also they want to save these documents in a different partition. For now, we'll use a, a simple scenario where all of the documents go to one section of the vector database. Now, going back to the bubble application, again, as mentioned, this is quite simple app where we are uploading a file. So the way we build it is that we 
added a few text elements and then we added a file uploader which is available in here so we just dragged and dropped this file uploader and then we showed the value of this file uploader so whenever a user clicks and uploads a file it tells the name or the location of the file uploaded then we added an input form for name of the document and another input form for the description of the document and those inputs are available in the ui builder in bubble now once that is done the main aspect is to configure how this file is processed so for that we added a button and then we added a workflow so in bubble this is the functionality as when you hit the button what happens and in the back end i have a few different workflows for that particular button I'm just going to walk through this scenario too that we talked about previously we talked about how to use a similar app for flowwise so i'm just going to distinguish both of these and this app is going to be available for you to view and learn from and replicate in your applications as well so what i have done is first thing is i am creating a new document from the provided information from the user so I take the name inputs value. This was the input field that we saw in previous screen. And then we take the description. And the main thing is to use the file uploader's value. So this is the file that was uploaded by the user. And since it does not save in a format which can be opened, um, so this is bubble specific, I am adding HTTPS. So now it can open the file if we were to preview that or we were to supply that to Langflow. Now, second step once we create the document is to send the document using API. And this is where I have configured the API for this particular application. And the way we do that is in the plugin section, we can add a plugin. And that plugin for our case is the API connector. It's one of the first ones available usually in the list. If not, you can search and then you can install that easily. It's a free plugin. And in a previous video, we have done that for Flowwise. So now we're going to configure similar for Langflow. And the way we can configure for Langflow is we have to look at the documentation provided for the flow. So if I were to go back to our Langflow app, and in this, if I were to look at this code block, I see that they have a few different configurations. So first is the API link. Second is this header. So H is the header. And then everything else below that in this D is what we will use as the JSON to configure our app. So let's take the heading to our bubble app. And I will add it as a shared header for our API calls. And once you add the key and values based on provided key and values here. Second is to set these. So what I've done is I've added a call. So you can click on add another call. This will give you options to configure. So I have given a name for upsearch and I have brought in the URL that was shown previously. So let's do that again in case. So I'll take this and provide that info here. And this is a post call since that's what we notice. And then we also see that it's a JSON. So I gave it a data type as JSON and also body type as JSON. And the last thing is to use this as an action, not data, so that we can use in our workflows. And JSON, I copied and pasted pretty much this whole thing in the bubble application. So that's what you notice. Now, the things I changed is I do not need a lot of these options at least for now so i'm not going to need that i'm not going to need the open AI embedding option probably not going to need this as well so i just deleted all of that so what's remaining right now is the input is query and this is the query we're going to ask as the first pass so when we upload the document and then the other is to upload a document from our bubble application so i will use the parameter of pi pdf loader and if I want to see what are the parameters, I could go into the PyPDF loader and see that it needs file path and metadata. So that is what I have provided here. I have just provided the file path. Now for the Pinecone, this is the vector database. 
I'm going to look what is available and same thing. I'm just going to use the namespace. Everything else stays same. So I am saving everything in one index name and namespace. Even if we like, we can remove the namespace. But for our example, I'll just keep that to showcase how that works. Okay, so two aspects that we will change is the query and the file path. So that is what I have added in this greater than lesser than sign. And that opens up these key value option right below the JSON. So that's where I have provided a documentation. So this is Tesla's earning PDF. And I am asking what is this document? So for now, I am going to give this a different name. So I will say blank flow Tesla bubble, and then I will run it and also monitor in the Pinecone console. So I see that I have tested with a few different ones, but I do not have Langflow Tesla bubble. So that's what I'm going to call this namespace and then run this by reinitializing the call. So again, this is for scenario two, I am upserting document. So let's give it a try. So once you hit reinitialize, it will go through the Langflow app and then it will do the upsert and then provide us back with some info. So it says, okay, this is what it appears to be. And then this result is what we are saving. So it's saved as text, which is great. Now, this is for upserting document. The other flow that we need is the way to get info out of the Pinecone vector database. So for that, I have created another flow, which is just for querying. And this is quite simple. I'm going to take the pinecone block. It needs embedding. So I will supply embeddings. I'm not going to supply a document or a splitter or so because that was done in the previous flow. And once I have this, I will use a retrieval QA chain. And in this, it needs a combined document chain. That is something I can provide. And then with that also, it needs a an LLM. And I'm using a chat open AI LLM with max token of 2000 this is something you could change and once you provide your api keys it should work fine hopefully let's give it a try and it seems like everything is green that's a good sign and right here for testing purposes now i'm gonna call this langflow tesla bubble to make sure that we are able to hit that pinecone namespace which is something that we can see is created right now based on our bubble app um, upsert. So that is good. Now I am going to chat and see if this works. So I ask, what is this document? If it's able to reach the vector database, it will be able to get the info. And that's where it says it's the Q1 update that was provided from Tesla. Okay. Now we know that this flow is working fine in Langflow. So now the next step is to take this URL and the configuration and use that in our bubble app. So I'm going to take the URL and similar to the previous case, I'm going to add another call. Once you do that, you get a new API call. I use that to configure for the querying part now. So I gave it a name, query API call. And then this is the URL we are going to be using from Langflow. So I just copied, pasted, and then we'll use it as an action. And then similar to before, it's going to be JSON for the data type as well as the body type. And also it's a post call. Now, since we already added the header, a shared header for all of the API calls, we do not need that header here. Let's see what else is needed. So header is first, and then everything else is the JSON. Now, in this, again, we are only going to use a few options, what we need for our bubble app to work. And main thing is to use a question, which is about the document. This is what we're going to be asking through the app. And then second is to provide a namespace, as which namespace are we calling? So if I call Langflow Tesla 1, this was the previous one I'm going to call bubble, which is the new one that we just used. And I'll keep this not private so I can call it from the app. Let's give it a try. Okay, so a few times I've seen that some of the blocks use query and some use question as the input. So this is what it was expecting. So I'm going to change that as the, the key here. So input query message. Let's check how it was here. 
okay so in the the code provided by Langflow it just said input and the message so based on each block we might have to see what is the input so if I were to look at the tweaks most likely it okay so I see that it is query so which is nice actually I can change this make it something uniform across all of the Langflow apps that I'm using so this is quite nice so right now it's set to query so I'll just follow that so I'll say it's query and then provide the message so let's give it a try again okay so it takes a few seconds but then it gives you a response that it generated so now since this works that we can use this scenario of saving everything into one namespace which is this provided namespace and maybe just to distinguish in our app we're gonna call this a little different so that we start a new namespace and save it there as well as ask questions from there so let's use maybe constitution as our document so i'm gonna call this as const and i'll use the same namespace in our querying as well so i'll call this flow const okay now once both of these are available the upsert and query we can configure that in our application so going back to the process file once we upload the pdf and then hit process file now it's going to create document and then we select the langflow api and the way we can do that in our plugin we'll have the list of api calls that we just configured and saved so in this case i am using upsert and when I select that, the only thing it's going to ask for is the file path, because that's the one that we said is not private. And that is the one that we have to provide from our app. So what I am doing is I'm saying the result of step one's file URL of value. So that is what we will send from the user. And once that happens, we just reset the relevant inputs, which is the interface will be available for now the same user to upload a new document so let's give it a try with uploading a document so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use our famous constitution of the united states pdf as the document once i upload it it will show the path that it's saved to we'll call it as constitution and then use the same for description and then hit process when we do this, we will most likely notice here in our Pinecone vector database that that will be available to us. So we have 23 right now namespaces, and I do not see anything which says Langflow cost. So that is something we will see. It will be added as a 24th vector databases namespace. So let's do that. Let's hit process, and it will go through the process. I see something happening up here. And when that is completed, we should see that the input are reset. If we were to go back to our vector database, we see we have one additional namespace, and that is the Langflow const. So that's good. Now we know that the new vectors are added. We can go back and in our chat section, this is for the scenario two, we can ask question as what is this dog now just to showcase how the querying of the chat was done this is another page that i have added and in this page pretty much the chat section is exactly same to some of the videos before and in here i am using a repeated group to display messages from our database and once the input value is provided by user so this is an input form and then once the send button is hit we first save the value in the table which is our database and then in here we configured a data type which is messages and then we save the message so there are two things that are happening here one is the document that we saved from the upload step and for a little more description on these please feel free to watch one of the earlier videos where we walk through how and why we're using these two tables now once the message is available in the table we can display that in here as repeated group and also then we call the api so i am gonna edit the workflow and in here i have kept the previous workflow for flowwise 
Now adding Langflow, which is very similar to what we have done. The only difference is we swap the Flowwise API with the Langflow API. And just to kind of give you an idea, if you are new to this channel, is that first thing we take the input that was provided by the user as a message, and we save that in the table, which is messages that we saw earlier. And once we save the message, and then we tag it as this is the user, not the API. Once we have both of these, we can take the message that was just saved in step one, and then send it to the Langflow API. The only additional step that we have in between both of these is to reset relevant inputs. So what happens is when we enter any question here and hit send, it first resets. So user sees that is visible in the chat history. And then in the backend, it's calling the Langflow API and it waits for the response. And once the response is available, it then takes that and again saves as a new message. So in here, I'm going to call this as a result of step threes, the query API that just was returned by the Langflow and the result of that. So now this is not a user because this is from the API call. So we can show that as an AI. So that is what we did. So that is distinguishing between the human and AI. And the next step is just to scroll down to the bottom of this entry. So it takes us down to the bottom of the chat window. So with that, everything looks good. We should be able to run the app. Let's give it a try. As we saw before, I am going to call this as what is this document about? And actually, let me just refresh since it asked for that. What is this document about? And as soon as we hit, it should save it in the messages table. And as soon as we have a response back, we will see that as the progress bar will complete and then we will have a response back, which is as expected. Great. Now, the good thing in Langflow is that there are a bunch of these available blocks. So I would definitely recommend to test it out with perhaps different LLMs or different embeddings, maybe add memories and see how that works with your application. You could add different vector stores. So some of the ones that stand out is Quadrant. This is available in the Python lang chain, and that is now available in Langflow as well. So in addition to that, you also have some of the ones which are common to Flowwise, so Wev8 or Pinecone or Chroma. So again, there are multiple options here you can use different combinations. The working of API is pretty much similar to Flowwise as we have seen in previous videos. There are a bunch of options here that you can tweak and then send that from our bubble application. So one last thing we'll look in this video is say scenario three, which is where we have multiple users and then each of the user would like to save their documents in a different namespace and they might have multiple documents and they just want to search and filter through the documents. So this filtering functionality is going to be quite important. And for that, the way we can do that in our chat application in our bubble app is we have an option to upsert the document similar to what we have seen previously. So I'm going to collapse this so you can see this better. So in here, previously we provided the file path and the namespace, we will just add additional tag, one additional tag for the PDF loader. And the way I get that is in our Langflow app, you can see that in tweaks, there is an option. Actually, let me go back to the upsert flow. And then I can see in the tweaks that for the PI PDF loader, there is metadata. And this metadata is the tag that we can filter with. And this comes from Python or JavaScript Langchain both use this metadata. Now, that's what I'm going to add to this new key value pair. So I'll say metadata, I'll give a document name, and I am going to call that. So I'm going to send now a Tesla earnings document, and I will give the name as Tesla. So everything else stays as is, we could give it a new namespace or a a same namespace. So I tested with a new namespace here. 
and gave one document as Tesla. And previously, before this, I tested with using Constitution. So both of those are going to be separated by this different filtering mechanism. Now, that if once that happens, there is a new parameter, document name. So I gave value for that. And then I can reinitialize the call. And once we do that, we'll see that there is a response back from our Langflow application, which looks something along these lines. So it has a few different aspects here. It kind of separates the page content into multiple of these list elements. And then it saves that in our pinecone. So if I were to go to pinecone, I see that this is the new test that I did. And also for calling the that particular document. Now in this third scenario, the additional aspect that we provide is we search in the pinecone vector database. So if I were to go back to the querying flow, I can see that in pinecone block, there is an option to provide search keyword arguments. And I can supply some input parameters to this keyword argument. That's what I'm going to be doing here. I will just say the search keyword argument to filter using document name. And this is again something, an arbitrary name that we gave. We can provide multiple of these different metadata tags and filter with that. So it could be a document name. And if you have a company or so, you can say search by organization or a group of documents. So there are many different ways you can group each of the provided PDF and then search through within that particular group or within the key value pairs. And once we do this, now again, I'm going to search for that exact document name and in that namespace and reinitialize the call. Once I do that, I will get the response back saying that this document is something along the lines of financial results of Tesla. So which is nice. And one could also go and look through the results as what are the results those are provided. Now to use the scenario three and the upsert and query functionality of that, there is a section. So this was also something we discussed in previous video. So first you can upload a document and in here you can provide a document, give a name. And then once the user wants to chat, they can go to the chat user. So this is user specific chat area. And then when we query, it just goes to that namespace, that particular namespace that we're interested. So we can query by document that we upload. So in here, you can follow the workflow. So there is a, a workflow that I have created for scenario three, Langflow. And in this, I am upsurging document. So you can follow along how the setting is done. It's very similar to the first one, except that we are providing a namespace with that user's specific unique ID. So we can separate each user. And also then we gave a document name that can be used in the metadata tag. And same thing in the new chat user page, which is exact clone of the other chat page that we looked at. In here, we are uh, following a similar pathway that we have seen for Flowwise before. Now, in this case, I'll disable for Flowwise and for Langflow. We create a message, reset relevant input, and then we call the Langflow API for querying and this for scenario three. So we provide the, the namespace, which is the, this particular username. So this is specific to each user. And then in there, we also provide a dropdown. So we take the value of the dropdown and then send it as the metadata tag. So once we send the API call, then we get response back. And that is something that we save it again as message and show that that it's API call. And that takes care of filtering the document and also filtering the user with the backend call. Great. So with that, we covered two of these scenarios, which are most common in any of the document UNA system. Either you have all of the users saving in one namespace or each user saving in a different namespace and also have multiple documents that you'd like to filter through. So definitely recommend you to try Langflow and all of the new additions and updates that they provided. Now you can use Langflow as well for your backend for the no code based Langchain app and your front end could be Bubble or any of the no code providers where you can call an API.
Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you'd like to learn more about building no code based AI apps using Langchain, I'm going to be launching a course soon. So at buildbyu.com, you can look through all the details. So we'll be using something called Bubble, which is a complete no code based tool and connecting that with Langchain based frameworks flow wise and Langflow. And we'll be building chatbots, agent apps and other AI apps. So definitely recommend you to check it out. It's going to be launching soon. There is pre-launch offer going on so you can benefit from that. Thank you.